we'll have a time of prayer. Uh, at this time, let's not think about the person next to us. Um, let's not think about what we have going on, what we need to do later on in the day. Let's really focus on God, uh, God really meet him today. Lord, I want to receive your word. May you open my heart and lead me through your Holy Spirit. So at this time, may you focus on God and let's have this time of prayer. Let's continue to pray. Uh, at this time, let's pray for one another as well as our families and for the church leaders. Uh, we are in the remnant movement. We're in this movement of world evangelism, and we don't do this by ourselves. So at this time, let's pray for each other that we can all really come to the answer of Christ in our lives, that we can receive true healing and true power uh, inside of God's covenant. So at this time, let's pray for one another. continue to pray I'm sure you guys know about the current world situation with the Ukraine and Russia um, many times we're just thinking about our current situation but a lot of things are actually happening in the world so at this time let's pray um, for Ukraine and Russia at this time Jesus Christ's name, amen. So um, we're in this remnant movement, and one thing that I want to um, remind you guys is world evangelism and remnant movement is not just something the church does, right? It's not just something that the pastors do or the assistant pastors do or the missionaries do. It's what we all do. This is what God has called us. Uh, he has called each and every one of you guys who has the true gospel as the remnant, those who remain, and as the evangelist who will leave behind, who will raise up the disciples to continuously uh, uh, do this movement of spreading the gospel. And that's been God's desire from the very beginning. So for us... <clears throat> constantly been re, uh, reminded of this, um, and Pastor Zhang reminds us, is all we have to do is hold on to the covenant. Second thing is, pray, holding on to that covenant. Uh, and yesterday was, you know, um, Remnant Day, and our church was the host. So I, along with a few of the remnants, got the opportunity to speak with a missionary in, in Chile. She's an elderly woman. She's been doing the uh, evangelism movement there for around 33 years. Um, 
And one thing that really stuck out to me was what she shared and that she wishes she can relate to all of you guys, the remnants. And that's this. If there was anything that helped her to overcome any, uh, all the difficulties as she went there, she didn't know the language, um, and it was a completely new environment for her. Right now, they're spacing, uh, you know, COVID has, uh, as we have felt the effects of COVID as well, but over there especially, right? Um, not allowing to gather, um, people not wanting to take vaccine and so forth, all those things. Um, when I asked her, you know, how did you overcome all this? Um, I kind of expected some, you know, method or some way of like what she actually prayed. But this is what she, she mentioned. There's just one thing we need. That's faith. Faith in who? In Christ. Faith that my life has been, uh, is a new life inside of Christ. My life is not my own. It is Christ. Wherever he wants to lead me, I will go. And that's all she held on to. When she didn't know uh, how to speak at all, she's like, well, God led me here. I will follow. If this is where you want me to go, I will go. Uh, no matter if it was a totally different country than where she came from in Korea, if this is where God wants me to go, I will go. Uh, there no, there's no amount of her own thinking. It was simply, God, today, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to share this gospel? And I will go. And I will do your work that you have called me to do. So faith is the only thing we need. And as we hold on to our faith in Christ, what do we do? Hold on to the covenant and prayer. And for that, why, what, uh, what is needed? This is something that I continu continuously pray for. God, may you restore worship and prayer in my life. Not just on Sunday, uh, the one day in the week, but every single day, Lord, if I'm apart from you, I'm not heading towards life. I'm heading towards destruction. Why is that? Because Satan exists in the world, and he's constantly trying to destroy us, to keep us from doing this remnant movement, keep us from doing this gospel movement. I hope all of us are aware and open our spiritual eyes to Satan. And I start to realize in my own life too, um, one of the things I kind of want to encourage for you guys as remnants as well as the teachers is although we may be doing things that seem, you know, um, you know, for the church, for Christ. Many times we lose hold of the one thing we need, faith, and we lose hold sight of who's behind, uh, who's attacking us, Satan. So in my life too, I start to realize this. What's really important in our life is that we open our spiritual eyes to see the world to see my life, to see my family, to see even the church, to see all around the world, we need to open our spiritual eyes. Let me give you one uh, example from my own life that I start to realize uh, I've been losing sight of Satan uh, and why this is so, so important. I asked you guys to um, pray for Ukraine and Russia earlier. I'm curious, what did you guys pray for? Um, I've been, you know, maybe some of you guys actually know the situation better than me, but I uh, saw some of the news through the YouTube videos, <clears throat> and I went down to the comments, right? And usually that's not a happy place, right? That's not a <laughs> good comments are usually not there. Uh, but if you see, what is all the comments? It says, praying for Ukraine, praying for the people, right? Praying for the innocent people that are suffering in Ukraine and all these things, right? And as I start to hear about, um, uh, you know, 
the situation and Putin, what he's saying. Um, and one of the things they said was like uh, he was, um, he's, he's the good guy, basically, from his stance, right? He's uh, trying to denazify or demilitarize and things like that. And I was like, what is this guy talking about, <laughs> right? Um, and I start to, to be like, start to think more about this situation, but from a spiritual perspective, right? All of these comments, I'm pretty sure not all of them are Christian, not all of them know the gospel, but they're saying they're praying for Ukraine. What does that mean, right? What is the difference between me saying I will pray for Ukraine and them? One of the things God showed me was nobody is really praying for Russia. Uh, there are some that are praying for the people that are saying, you know, oh, the, um, you know, uh, uh, the citizens are the ones who are suffering from the war. That is true. Okay? Less people are praying for Russia. I didn't see many comments in, about Russia. Even more so, who's not being prayed for? Putin. As I don't know how you guys see this, but what I start to open my eyes is, who's causing him to wage war and fight against Ukraine? Who's behind this? That's when I start to see, uh, I lost sight of Satan. People are losing sight of, they're not able to see the spiritual reality behind all that. War is not from God. Then who is that from? It's from Satan. And who is the initiator of this? It's Russia, it's Putin. And we're losing sight of who we really need to be praying for. What we need to be really praying for is breaking down Satan. Who is using Putin to attack Russia or attack uh, Ukraine, and all these suffering is coming out from here, right? Who else do we need to be praying for? The missionaries and the believers in that place, right? Um, why I'm bringing this up is we are so maybe caught up in the war and the things that are actually happening things that are popping up in the news. But for us as those who have the true gospel, what we really need to see is open our spiritual eyes, see how is Satan working in this world. So as you pray, I, I ask you guys, and as you maybe follow this, may you ask yourself, what's actually happening spiritually? How is Satan working? What is God doing here? Why, why is this happening? And start to ask that not only for this situation, but even in also in our lives. Our lives too. We need to open our spiritual lives and we're losing hold of Satan. Let me give you examples, right? Uh, at school, right? Um, what are we thinking about? We're just thinking about the classes, maybe, uh, you know, the things that we need to do, the deadlines. And we're not seeing, okay, how is Satan working in that? And secondly is, how is that even connected to this remnant movement that God has called me to? How is that even related to the gospel movement? We're not really thinking about those things, right? And I want to encourage you guys all, especially at your age. Um, I know, you know, Pastor Zhang and, and them, they say, uh, we've realized it later, right, in, in their age, right? Some people, maybe they realize it in their young adult age, maybe 30s, 40s. But you guys have the opportunity to realize and come to the answer of Christ, hold on to and live by faith at your current age, at this young, young age. And that is a great blessing. Even for myself, I didn't really, uh, it was, of course, part of God's journey, but I didn't really come to understand this until around uh, late uh, college years, right? Uh, some of you guys, of course, are in college, but especially for you guys that are in high school, uh, or maybe going to go up into high school, may you guys really hold on to faith, restore worship in your life. Here's a, uh, an, I want to give another example of why this is important. Um, and I want to ask you guys to Not be deceived by uh, uh, Satan, right? By what 
the world says, right? Media is saying one thing. And even President of the United States, of course, uh, that's another person we got to pray for, President of the United States, right? Um, even President of the United States, he's not able to see the spiritual reality. He's saying Russia will face the consequences, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and they're doing sanctions and all of these things. But uh, we're focused on what's, what they're doing. What we need to see is behind that, the spiritual reality. So don't be deceived by what's happening in the world. Don't be deceived by what, I'm sorry to say this for, to the parents, but not even what your parents say or what other people say, what your friends say or how they're living. Don't be deceived by that. Why is that? There's only one answer. Christ. Everything else, like Pastor John mentioned, is not an answer for us. What the people of the world, maybe even sometimes what your parents are holding on to, that can't be your answer. That's not going to lead you into the life. That's not going to lead you into this gospel movement. Only Christ. Right? In today's message, what did Pastor John say? There's only one reason why God will be working through us. is because we have this answer. The answer that he wants to give. So I want you guys to always be asking the question. Whenever situation comes, whatever somebody says, whenever somebody says something to you, ask, who is this from? Is this from God? Or is this from Satan? We have to always be doing one thing, is confirming that. Who is this from? I'm going to say this now. Not everything your parents say is from God. Not everything that your friends say is from God. Not every, everything I think is from God. Right? So we need to confirm who is it from. Why is that? Only way for us to live, only way for us to live the life like we sung today, to find the me who God made, to do his work that he called us to do, only way is to hold on to Christ. May we not lose hold of that. And so I want to give a, a, a story about my life. It was when I was younger. Um, I, I don't know exactly how young I was, but I was pretty young. And one time I actually, it was like in a shopping area, and I, I got lost. I got separated from my parents. So... I was like looking around for them, right? And what happened is we had a rental van. And I, for some reason, saw one that looked just like the one we rented. And it was going somewhere else. It was going out into the street. I was like, I thought that was ours. I thought that was my family. I was like, oh, I'm right here. I'm right here. Don't go. <laughs> and, and they left. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, they left me, you know? And started to cry. I'm like, oh. um, Funny thing is that right after that, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I was just crying, sad. I was like, oh, what do I do? And then I saw a police or like security guard, and for some reason, I hid from them. I was like, oh. <laughs> and there was like a wall I hid. I was like, didn't want to get caught. And I don't know where I learned this from or why I thought this, but I thought if they caught me and then my, my parents uh, found me, then they had to pay. <laughs> Like, I thought they had to pay money or something like that. So I was like, oh, no, like, uh, we don't have money, so, like, we can't, that can't happen. So I was hiding from the, the security, and the thing that I didn't know was before, uh, my parents were looking for me. They were asking a security guard to look for me. And so there was a guy on his bike, he's going back and forth while I was hiding from him. <laughs> Eventually, I got caught, and I was crying on his back while he was bicycling me back to my parents. I remember... Oh, okay, they didn't, they didn't leave me, <laughs> right? And I've been back to my family. <clears throat> so thing why I share this is from a very young age, without us knowing, we're imprinted with a lot of incorrect things, right? Which is exactly why I want to encourage you guys, hold on to your faith, hold on to only Christ. Let that be rooted into you from your young, uh, young age and uh, instead of all the incorrect things. Once you get older, as you go older, and you're more imprinted with all these incorrect things, it will be harder for you to change. 
by that time, you're going to be living a life of trying to change what has been imprinted in you. So may you guys be encouraged. Your young age is a blessing, right? May you guys hold on to Christ, hold on to his word. And second thing I want to mention is, Hold on to what's true. Um, at the time, I thought my parents left me, but reality was they were looking for me. And what do we need to hold on to? Let me, uh, let's read together John 21, 20 to 22. This is after Jesus had uh, revealed to Peter how he was going to die. And let's read John 21, verse 20 to 22. It says, after this, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. All we have to do, don't be looking at the world, don't be looking at other people, is just follow Christ. That's it. Very simple. But many times we're being deceived by Satan, deceived by the circumstances, what we see in front of us, when the truth is that all we need to do is follow Christ. All we have to do is hold on to what he says is the truth, right? the spiritual truth. So don't be worried about anything, uh, about your studies. And Pastor Yu mentions this a lot. Um, don't worry about your studies. And he says, like, uh, the way the world is going, of course, yeah, you need those things, but it will not be a big impact to your life. Uh, and as in this age of contact free and all these things, yes, you have to study and get the basic knowledge, but in the end, once you graduate and do all that, it's not really going to matter, right? So do your studies. Don't be so worried about it. Don't be so con don't be so worried or anxious about it, uh, about whether um, uh, if you fail or not. Right. The important thing is follow Christ. So whether you fail, whether you get all A's, doesn't really matter. What matters most is are you following Christ? If we lose hold of Christ, everything else doesn't matter. Everything else is in vain. May you believe in that. In your workplace, at school, uh, in your family, if we lose hold of Christ, if we lose hold of worship and prayer, we lose hold of everything. So may we restore that in our life and continue to follow Christ. Today I want to show you guys Jesus as the model for how we must live. He's the greatest model. Um, I don't know if you're, you have anyone you guys look up to. They don't compare to Jesus. <laughs> so may we look at him and see what did he do. And what he did was he looked at those who had faith, and he did works accordingly. So let's see in Matthew 9, 1 through 8. This is the paralytic man. Matthew 9. Uh, so it's going to be just a couple of verses from that. Matthew 9, verse 2. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. But in verse 3, this is what the world says. These are what the scribes said. Some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. How can he forgive other people's sin? Jesus, he took no heed to that. And in verse 6, what did he do for the paralytic man? He said, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And it was done, uh, done so. Let's see uh, another example. Rulers, the ruler's daughter and, uh, and the woman in Matthew 9, verse 18, says, my daughter has just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Verse 23, And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And during that time, as he was traveling to the ruler's house, he, there was a woman as well in verse 20 through 22. It says, Behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years 
came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, if, only, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And finally, another final example, Matthew 9, 32 to 34, the mute man says, as they were going away, behold, a demon oppressed man who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute, mute man spoke, and the crowds marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisee said, He casts out demons by the prince of demons. So what I want all of us to see through these examples, and there's many more in the Bible, the world is against Christ. Why? They're under the control of Satan. They're saying, Jesus is blasphemy. How can he do this? And why are you eating with the sinners? Why are you, uh, you know, when he's ca actually cast out demons, oh, that's not by God. That's from the evil spirits. That's Satan. Right? And they laughed at him when, uh, you know, he, he was saying, oh, the girl is not dead. She's just sleeping. What? <laughs> what, kind of, what, do you, what is this guy, right? Um, what I want us to know is this. For the people that looked to Christ, that had faith, it was done according to their faith. We have that same faith. We have that same answer of Christ. We have that same answer of the gospel. And this can take place in our life too. There's nothing God can't do in our life. What, maybe there's a family problem in our life. That's not a problem for God. May you have faith in who God is. What, what Christ can do in your life. He's come to restore us. He's come to restore the world. From what? From who? Satan. From all the curses of sin. So may we have that faith. May you hold on to that faith. In whatever problems or circumstance you're facing, any hardships you're facing, may you hold on to Christ. And I believe that according to your faith, it will be done. He will lead you into that, uh, whether it's healing, whether that is within the gospel movement, he'll lead us to the very end. And so what is in our future along this remnant journey? The world evangelism. Let's read Matthew 9, 36 to 38. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. What's the harvest? That is the souls, right? The lost souls in the world. Uh, we saw the video about uh, Latin America, how God is opening the doors throughout Latin America. And this is what we need to see. It might not be taking place here, but God is truly work at work in this world with his disciples. And that's not just something in Latin America. That's something God can do where we are to, here in America as well. So maybe hold on to that hope as well. When we see how God is working in other places, don't just think of it as, oh, wow, like God is doing that there. How come it's not working here? Hold on to your faith. Christ can do that in America as well. Christ can do that in your schools, in your, each of your fields as well. What is the only criteria for that to take place? Hold on to your faith in Christ. Hold on to the gospel that God wants to proclaim to the world. As long as we have that, he will lead us to the place that needs the gospel. Let's read Matthew 28, 18 through 20 together. This is what God has called each and every one of you. This is the purpose of our life. Let's read together. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. This is the calling we receive. Uh, some of you guys might be thinking, eh, world evangelism. Man. <laughs> you know, um, Shinji will know this too, but... Uh, the missionary asked, uh, from Chile that as we were talking, she's like, come to Chile. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, she was like, Shinji, you come to Chile. <laughs> and I'll be honest, when I heard that, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. And I like, didn't respond back. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, of course, there has to be God's calling for us to go to a specific place. But that does show what's in my heart, <laughs> right? There is some hesitancy. Some of you guys might feel uh, like, oh, I, I can't do world evangelism, uh, especially for me as an introvert. In the beginning, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't go out and speak to people, right? Uh, may you lay all of that down. Uh, again, as long as we have faith, like she mentioned, as long as we have faith, God will take care of the rest. Our introvertedness, our shyness, me not being able to speak out, hey, that might be true, but God can help us overcome that. He has the power to do that. Uh, so may we hold on to that faith. May we hold on to our calling of preaching the gospel into each of our fields. There's many people in each of your fields that need the gospel. So may we open our spiritual eyes and ask God for the heart to proclaim this gospel. Um, I want to encourage you guys may we restore our scheduled prayer even if it's just five minutes a day what matters is not how long we do it is how much are we giving our lives, our heart to Christ. May you have the quality time with God, even if it's just five minutes in your life. That will change the direction of your life. Uh, again, while you're uh, at this age, in your youth, may we come to meet Christ every single day. This is where life is found. We spend a, a lot of time uh, you know, and make, uh, give our time for all kinds of other things that cannot be our answer, that cannot give us life, that in fact actually might be ruining our life without us knowing. But now that we have come to know who is the true answer, who is the one who can give us life, may we give even just the five minutes to meet with him in our day. How long do we have to keep doing this? Until we really come to the answer, that I only, only need Christ. That Christ is really the only answer I need. And I will only follow him. Not my plan, not what the world says, no one else. I only follow Christ. That might not take place in a day. Uh, I, you know, we might pray one day, five minutes, still don't really have come to the answer of only. That's why we must keep continuously doing so until this takes place. When will this take place? Within God's time schedule. In this age, I don't know about you guys, um, but at least for me, they're teaching us to take control of my life. Take control of your life. Right? Take control of your time. Take control of your health. Take control of your future. Christ is the opposite. It's not me taking control. It's me giving control to Christ. Me giving control to God. Lord, my life is not mine. Here, use me as you will. Lord, my time is not my own. Lord, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, I'll do so. That's the opposite of what the world teaches us. So maybe start today. Have that five minutes in your life. And because it's in God's time schedule, I want to encourage you guys, don't give up. It may seem to not be taking place. And like we read in the Bible scriptures, people might be laughing at you or mocking at you. They're like, oh, why do you go to church on Sunday? <laughs> Right? It's like, come on, just uh, come and hang out with us. Right? They'll, they cannot understand us, why we are doing these things. They might, uh, you know, criticize you. Um, they might 
you know, uh, especially for one clear example I can think of is regards to uh, gay uh, uh, marriage and, and that topic, right? People hate Christians because they have a certain image of them. They don't know the gospel. They don't know the Christians who have the true gospel. So don't give up. Don't be deceived by what the world sees. Don't be deceived by what other people say. Hold on to the truth. Discover only Christ. And why do I keep telling you to hold on to these things? All these things are each of yours. It's not, oh, Pastor, Assistant Pastor Joseph's, or it's not Pastor Zhang's, or it's not some other person's. It's yours. Did you accept Christ? Do you know the gospel? Do you have the gospel? That's yours then. All the things that God has promised that he will lead us to, that he was leading us to do this remnant movement to proclaim the gospel, that's yours. So may you take hold of that as yours. May you say, may you find the me that God made me, the me that uh, God wants to use inside of this remnant movement. Uh, And uh, I believe that As we do this, he will continuously work in each of your lives tremendously, and many answers and doors will open in your field. So at this time, let's have a time of prayer. a brief moment to pray to God. Uh, Christ is the only way for me to be revived in my life. He's the only answer that God has given this world to receive salvation and be restored in all aspects of our life. So at this time, today, myself, today, God, may I meet with you. May I, uh, may you give me the faith to lay down every single thing in my life within your hands and simply confess of Christ, simply hold on to Christ as the answer for my life. So let's have a brief moment to pray uh, this prayer together. There is no one. 
hidden in the trial and the change this one thing remains this one thing remains your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Sing, and on and on.
of world evangelism in our lives. We believe that you will continue to open the doors of evangelism as we hold on to Christ in our life, as we restore worship and prayer. So I pray for all of us, Lord, you would uh, fill us with this blessing. So we pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name.